Hey guys, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. I got rambly again in a video. So we're going to record this thing again and it's going to be just so streamlined. It'll be amazing and blow your mind. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell because those three things really, really help out the channel and it helps me to help you with more content like this. All right, so I want to go over uh, some of the reasons why you should not do a crowdfunding campaign for your comic book. Uh, I don't, my, my goal here is not to discourage you, but rather basically show you some things that you really need to be considering before you go ahead and pull the trigger and launch your campaign. The sooner that you get these things checked off your list, the better you are. Uh, chances are though, if you haven't put any effort into building up an audience or doing any of these things that I outlined ahead of time, it's going to take you some time and that's okay. You should plan on it taking you uh, quite a number of months at the least in order to prepare and have a successful crowdfunding campaign. Now, I've mentioned before that I'm reading Hellboy and it really, you know, I've, I've read like one one shot from Hellboy before and it was fun. It was interesting. Uh, but now I've really been getting into just reading the whole thing through and it's been really, really fun. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And that sort of reminded me of some of the Mike Mignola interviews that I had watched before. Uh, and, and, you know, I decided to go back and look at this one. I'd already watched this before and it was really, really fascinating because you've got Mike Mignola and also his wife, Christine, and they talk a lot about the business aspect of making comics. Now, Mike has some words of wisdom for us and I'm going to play a segment of this for you. Uh, but I want to point out that Mike Mignola has achieved this really rare, uh, almost impossible dream in comics. And you really think about how few people there are in this world that have a deal like he does. And that is that he owns his own character. He owns a story. He has control over it. He's got a publisher that allows him to do basically in his own words, whatever he wants to do. And uh, he's also got fans that enjoy it and it keeps the lights on essentially basically he's able to afford to support himself and his family based off of the earnings that they get from owning this intellectual property and the character hellboy all right so we're going to go through his advice first and then i want to show you uh, some of the pointers that i have specifically for crowdfunding your indie comic so let's listen to mike you don't take on more work than you can do because you want to do your best work I've, I, I mean, I had a, an editor who's still friends, a, a friend of mine, but he pushed me to do so much more work than I could do well. And that's when I learned to hate the term, it's good enough. It was, I was doing two, I, for a while there, I did like two books a month. I only did layouts. I was at the mercy of the guy who inked me. Uh, in one case, I was inked by a good guy. In the other case, I was inked by a horrible guy. Both books are not very good. So... I, it was a good four months for money, but as a result, it was four months or five months, whatever it was, of work that did absolutely nothing for my career. And so many guys fall into that trap of, oh, I've got to take all the work and I've got to do this for the money and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and what they've done is they've produced a body of work that nobody gives a shit about. All right. Yeah, so this is definitely something that I see come up in, in comics, in indie comics for sure. You have a successful campaign, you've got some money to make the book, and then you're looking for other projects, right? And a lot of it is about trying to keep money, cash flow going. Uh, now, something important to ask yourself is what is best for your career right now? Your future in comics, what is best for it? Is it doing a whole bunch of commissions or doing a whole bunch of stor short stories for random people and for small page rates or whatever it might be that you're, you're getting offered? Is that the best thing for your career or is it being a little bit more choosy? If you're at the beginning of your career, chances are you're going to be saying yes to every opportunity that comes your way. I'll be honest, I'm in this stage right now. I'm going to pretty much say yes to any opportunity that makes any reasonable sense uh, for me because... That's what I'm looking for is building a name for myself. But I got to believe that the difference between someone like Mike Mignola and having uh, this great creator owned project that he has uh, and the big legacy that he's going to leave behind and maybe another really talented and experienced uh, comic artist or writer that doesn't do this kind of stuff 
is is choosing what kind of projects you're going to be spending your time on okay so if you're interested in crowdfunding chances are you've got an idea that you want to go with you've already got something that technically would be creator owned and you want it to be very successful i'm going to be giving you some tough love right now because i don't think there's enough of this going going around at the moment uh, th the truth is if you think of any successful crowdfunding campaign that you are, are impressed with, that you admire, you maybe you go on Indiegogo and you see some comics and you think, wow, who is this guy? He's got no name and yet he raised you know X amount of dollars with his comic book. I'm going to do that too. And so you're tempted to throw together a campaign and launch it next week. And lo and behold, the money does not come flowing in. Now, there's some reasons why your crowdfunding campaign might be a failure. I'm going to go over some of those reasons. And the point of this, again, is not to discourage you. It's to really give you a checklist of things that you should make sure you have down packed uh, before you launch the campaign. And so when you look at crowdfunding campaigns, I'll just go open up to Indiegogo here. You might recognize some of the creators uh, that have done really, really well. Some of the projects you might see other projects that you don't know. You don't recognize anybody that has been on the book and yet it's raised quite a lot of money or at least as much money as you're hoping to make yourself. Now I would suggest if you see a campaign that's impressive to do a little bit of research on the creative team and find out what they did to get it funded. If they truly are somebody without a name and they just posted their campaign willy nilly and got it funded the next week, I, I don't know, I'll eat my shoe or something. I just don't believe that that actually happens. I've never seen a case where it's totally just, you know, uh, you know, the week of you just launched a campaign and you know, see what sticks and you're wildly successful. More often than not, those creators are, have, they've done a ton of legwork ahead of time and they've, you know, developed themselves as a comic creator ahead of time. And what you're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. So I think it's important to get the right expectations. Uh, and the way, best way to do that really is to just look into creators doing books that are successful and that, you know, or maybe at that level of success that you're aiming for or that you're hoping to obtain, find out what they did and why it's so successful. It's really actually not that difficult if you're willing to get in there and look behind it and be open-minded uh, to perhaps being disappointed or discouraged with how much work has gone into it ahead of time. All right, so I looked up this article by Miss in the Biz. Wow, and this is uh, written by Edit Divine. F just fabulous. Uh, now, I don't know what kind of crowdfunding uh, Edda, De Edna, what's her name? Edna? Edda Divine has done, uh, but it it's safe to say crowdfunding essentially all runs by the same principles. Comics have a few specific things but not really as far as the campaign is concerned that has more to do with the production of the product so a lot of these things are going to carry over but i did include things from my own list that i think are important you should not launch your crowdfunding campaign until you have checked off these boxes and been very thorough about it uh, ahead of time okay so number one is you didn't do your research i can tell you it's not difficult to just google uh what is the best time of year to launch my crowdfunding campaign what is the best day of the week to launch my crowdfunding campaign? How much money do I need to make a comic book? Uh, it, ask other creators that have done it. Watch videos like these. Uh, there's all sorts of research that you can and absolutely should be doing before you launch a crowdfunding campaign because that's going to help you optimize your campaign for success rather than just go off of your own assumptions because I your assumptions are going to be wrong. I, I can you know, speak from experience. Uh, you know, some of, some of my assumptions worked out and they were okay. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I had to look at what was working for people, what went well in order to see what I could do myself. And so your assumptions most of the time are not going to be correct. All right. One more word on research here. And that is uh, worthy of pulling out a calculator here. I can tell you, I launched my campaign downcast. It was very, very successful. I raised, um, you know, over $31,000 on the book and that was so great thank you very much everybody but it is important to understand i'll tell you right now that's not well it's my first published comic book as soon as we get the thing shipped it's not my first experience writing and it's not my first experience writing comics uh, i did a lot of little short projects i hired artists uh, i tried drawing myself i did lots of of writing and things like that and this helped me learn 
and it helped me improve myself. And even though those projects never got published or never got read, they were still really crucial for me to help my own career in creating comics. So yeah, I can tell you that I didn't just decide one day to do it and do it. It's been something I've been working on for some number of years before even getting to this point. And you know, there'll be many years after to try and develop and improve and really have something, uh, you know, even a shadow of what Mike Mignola has would be amazing. All right. So part of your research should be how much money do I need to raise? Uh, and this is an important question. I'll tell you, I put $7,000, uh, in, in hindsight, that was not enough money. And so I'm glad that I surpassed that, uh, by a lot. Um, it would have, you know, I probably would have figured out a way to make it work, but I definitely wouldn't have made money. I probably would have lost money, but at least I would have had a book to show for it, which would have been fantastic. Uh, but yeah, understanding how much money you need to raise is really, really important. If I could do it all over again, I think I would say $8,000 is how much I'd want to earn. Okay. A minimum. Okay. I, my real goal would be much higher than that, but that would be the bare minimum goal uh, $8,000 to make a comic book to get creative teams paid um, and you know get the book finished and shipped out to people that would probably be my goal um, though don't quote me on that I'm I, you know I'm not involved in your book so you know don't sue me all right so it might be tempting I'm gonna go scroll down to this next one uh, you don't have a social media footprint all right this is the big one this is controversial but let me show you why this is so important we're gonna keep our calculator out now, if you are frustrated because you don't have a social media footprint, it's not very big, and you think, well, that's stupid. Now I can't crowdfund comics because my social media footprint isn't very big. The world is unfair. Well, the truth is that crowdfunding is not really for everybody. It's not a, a type of um, publishing that that um, always works 100% of the time. The only reason it does work is because people are able to bring their crowd to the platform to fund it. Um, you'll get much fewer backers that are just on the platform and happen to see your book. Um, most of your backers are going to come from people that you directly sent to your book. All right, so we're gonna look at this and social media footprint, let's do some math. So let's remember, we want $8,000. So I'm gonna say instead here, let's uh, let's clear this whole thing. Let's say I, I'm gonna be charging or I'm hoping for my average backer to be at $25. So that doesn't mean that that's the minimum. I might have some some tiers that are a little bit lower. I might have some that are higher, but you want your average backer to really be paying $25. If you can make it higher, that's great. Chances are though, if this is your first campaign and you don't have a name for yourself already and you haven't done the crowdfunding thing before, it's going to be really hard for you to command more than $25 on average from any given backer. All right, so how many people do you need to make that happen? Uh, let's think of 100 people. That's a nice round number. Do you know 100 people by name right now? Do you know 100 people that you could call up uh, and tell them about your comic book? Let's assume that you have 100 people, not only that you know in your circle of friends and family, but they're also 100% going to back your comic book uh, and you know they're going to back it quickly. So let's say you have... $25 times 100 people, that is $2,500. That is not even close to getting an $8,000 campaign funded. And so you start to realize the problem here, that you have to have some way to bring much, much more than 100 people to your campaign. If you're struggling to get 100 people because your social media footprint isn't that big, um, it's going to be really, really hard to get more than that. And I know this gets tough and a lot of people get discouraged, uh, again, because the social media platform is not big enough. Uh, I'm not going to tell you a certain fast and hard rule, but I think this helps to understand. I will tell you that for me, what it took to get to the point of raising over $30,000 on my campaign is it took posting daily on Twitter and interacting with people in positive ways daily on Twitter. And then it also took making daily YouTube content that was appealing to people in you know, that might be interested in my comic book and then asking them to join my mailing list. Now I have, it's like 430 emails in my mailing address right now. And that's nowhere near as big as I would like it to be, but it did work for me at least enough to sort of prime the pump and get enough people going to the campaign to draw attention to it. 
um, and you know help it get some sort of natural and organic uh, traction on Indiegogo. So if you're wanting to raise eight thousand dollars and you really really need you know everybody to have an average of twenty five dollars. Uh, backing your campaign you're going to need 320 people to back your campaign and that is at a bare bare minimum now 320 people that is not that does not mean your mailing list or your social media footprint is 320 people that's not going to be good enough you have to have it much much bigger uh, in order to get that rate of 320 people so i get it this is hard i know uh, but this is important if you don't have this put together your social media footprint your advertising group, your crowd together, it's probably not a great idea for you to crowdfund. All right, the next one on the list was here. here is you're just an artist. Yeah, if crowdfunding really by definition, it's a business venture, it's something that you're putting together in order to get a project done and you're taking on the work as a publisher yourself. And so if you just wanna do writing or you just wanna do the art, and that is your your sole purpose in life you don't want to be bothered with anything else crowdfunding is not right for you now you could change your attitude on this and start thinking of it as a business and take more responsibility or you could i don't know do submissions to uh publishers you could do web comics you could do any number of other things but crowdfunding is not for you if this is the case number four this is kind of funny you're shy uh yeah i've heard this a lot or i'm an introvert uh, things like that. I'll tell you, I'm not really the most outgoing person in the world. Um, I don't know that I'm shy. It's kind of one of those things like I can turn on and be sociable if I need to, but I don't really prefer it. You know, I'd rather not. But even me with that kind of disposition, I was able to do it at least to the, the tune of $30,000. And that is because I've just forced myself to put myself out there and it seemed to work. So, you know, don't be too stressed out about it if you're shy, but you do have to be willing to talk to people and practice it for sure. Uh, number five is you aren't engaged in the community. You notice this isn't just about comics, this is anything. So there's always going to be uh, a group of people that are interested in your niche. You could even drill down and look at people that are interested in not only comics, but also your specific genre that you're, you're sort of drilling down to. And I think that could be helpful as well. You just want to engage. All right, I added a few more things to this list, and this is specifically if you're making a comic book, number one is quality. Uh, often I'll see campaigns that they really are trying to keep a tight budget, and so they'll spend all their money on line art, or they'll spend all their money on who knows what, nothing whatsoever, uh, and they'll just get some really subpar artwork together for the campaign. That is not a good route to go. Uh, you're already sort of sabotaging your own success by having something that looks suboptimal you really want to compete with the other campaigns that are up there and so making sure that you have as good a quality as you possibly can uh, making sure that it looks like something that people will be interested in backing that's a good idea uh, let's see a following i already talked about uh, building up your following that's very very important i also said expectations that's another one i'd add to the list uh, and that is I mean, know what you're going to do if you don't hit your actual goal. Like you have your goal that you post on uh, Indiegogo, but you'll also have your real goal that you're hoping to reach if everything goes according to plan. And so setting your expectations appropriately uh, and realizing, hey, this project is about getting a book finished because that's what's going to be best for my career. If the goal is to make a hefty profit so that you can, you know, buy a car or whatever, you know, sort of live off of for the next three years, uh, then you know you're going to have to have a lot more backers and you're going to have to have a nice high, uh, you know, point for people to buy in at and uh, like all these things. You're going to have to make sure that you can support those kind of expectations. So if this is your first one, I would expect that this is going to be a stepping stone in your career. If you think about it that way, think of it, about it as an investment in your time and a learning experience, uh, then honestly, I wouldn't be expecting to make a lot of money. Uh, the next one I have is getting feedback. Uh, I get feedback all the time. Uh, some of it I agree with, some of it I don't. It doesn't matter. You've got to get used to it. You're putting yourself out there, which is a hard thing to do. It can be really scary, uh, but be prepared that you're going to have to take and receive and figure out what to do with feedback. Uh, the next thing is in your Indiegogo page itself. 
I can I cannot stress this enough. Look at some campaigns that are really put together well and they look nice and they make you want to click on them and and just order it because it's such a nice package. Look at some of those campaigns and try to capture the essence of what they're doing or learn from it or something like that. You need the page to look professional uh, in order for people to back the book. Even if the book is great, but your page looks like garbage, why do that? Just optimize it so it looks great. All right, next is your pitch. Uh, you should have your pitch in a video on your campaign. That's a nice thing that you can do. And I can tell you, I have a lot of people that I know backed my campaign because they watched the video and they thought the story sounded interesting. And so that's a great way. Why not? It's another tool at your disposal to use. So use it and also have your pitch ready for any time you're talking anywhere, whether it's on a live stream, uh, to your, whatever, your neighbor, your buddy, whatever, have that pitch down and make sure that it is a priority, especially if you're the writer, uh, to be able to do that correctly. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to say how much money investment. It's not one of those things that you can just put down a hundred bucks and have everything ready and expect the crowdfunding campaign to pay for the more money that you're willing to invest at a time. I think the better off you are. Obviously, you've got to make the entire budget work. Now, I've heard some people say $1,000 is all it takes. I am going to disagree. It, I mean, I tried to save money where I could, but it cost me more than $1,000 to have downcast. So I would say at least plan on spending $2,000 to make sure that your artwork looks good and make sure that you've got a good uh, creative team on board for the book. And I think that you'll be in a better position and set yourself up for a success there. If you're unable to invest that kind of money to start off with, uh, maybe you're the artist. And so, you know, you can do that by yourself. That's great. Uh, if you're not, you still got to, there's people you're going to have to pay in order to make it happen. So I would, you know, plan on it. If you can't do that, crowdfunding is probably not right for you, at least not yet. All right. So thanks for listening. I hope this was a helpful video. Um, th yeah, again, like look at what other people do. This is so great of, uh, I want to say like Vic Mignon, it's not Mike Mignola. It's so great of him, uh, to share with us the, these words of wisdom. I think a lot of people can benefit from it. So thanks very much. And, uh, don't forget to join my mailing list. It's in the description below. I will talk to you next time.